Set it risk on foam. God knows not where to belong, so it borrows our home, settle it as its own. Raise them songs and stories. Negligence designed. The party bounds of heroes. And marrow dust refined. The noblest of shells. Set it risk on foam. That knows not where it's from, so it borrows our home, set as its own. There the she a corner, obsolete as a kind of machonga gauge. I use they just planted zarzas into Mala. Great respect for us and our global mongrel breed. Consciousness about the significance of the headquarters garrison at GBO and the once more or less occluded story of the Moore Street site, all the entire terrorist and its immediate environs. The news, this newish concept of a revolution corner, I think is very significant, and I think it's ultimately a way that the, the right type of heritage, the right type of political message, the right type of, I suppose, public-private uh, interface can succeed. Bear this in mind, successive Irish administrations did not want a main in prison to survive. symbolic of so much of what's playing out across the city. We should ask ourselves who controls the city? Who does the city serve? Is the city controlled by developers and financiers? One, two, two. Or does One, it serve two, two. the people? In Dublin... Is this working? Yeah. In Dublin, we have seen places of historic significance destroyed, allowed to deteriorate by developers wishing to clear the past to make way for the new. Not alone does the agenda of greed level historical sites, it leaves inner city communities lacking vital resources. They could throw up Celtic Tiger apartments, too small to raise a family in, but playgrounds and community centres had to wait. Developers treated the city like Lego blocks for the rich. Profiteers created the conditions of a housing crisis in the city which we're suffering with today. 
But it's not always developers that create the crisis in this city. We witness the disgraceful neglect of the Croppies Acre site, which commemorates the rebels of 1798. Thankfully, in recent times, that park is reopened to the public, but there's still plenty of work to do there too. Here though, what we have is people taking control of the direction the city is going in. Isn't it a sad indictment in this centenary year that cursed greed for personal profit is determined to smother in concrete the Morsi battle site. Are we going to stand up and be counted and stop it or be bystanders? What do you say? Yeah. The final 1916 battle was as much to win the hearts and minds from subject slaves to aspiring citizens, moreover a military success, which was their objective. For Ireland to stand proud and independent among the nations of the world and it did determine to be recognized as a sovereign and independent country as defined in our proclamation. James Connolly made some profound statements. One comes to mind, he said, a man only succeeds to the extent in which he believes, and I say the same for the country. Those men and women of 1916 believed the greater battle was for our own identity from slumbering slave to awakened citizens. That liberation was a natural burning desire in every full-blooded, freedom-loving human being. The only true expression of our personal fulfillment genetically linked to our past freedom struggle. All of Ireland and its wealth and resources for the people of Ireland are, as Connolly famously said, we only want the earth. Porrick Pierce. Porrick Pierce said, the fools, the fools, the fools. They've left us our Fenian dead. Was he right? Did he have more faith in us than we deserve? I personally know of one village where rebel forces suffered heavy losses. Their bodies were thrown into a sandpit like sheep carcasses and remain unmarked to this day. More credit than we deserve. All these rebels died with pride so future generations could enjoy the benefits of their resources and the fruits of their labor. More credit than we deserve. We have witnessed an elite of Irishmen driven by greed rob the inheritance of our children. More credit than we deserve. We continually vote for them, pay them work on, working man's fortune and pension, while they continue to fleece us and our resources, aided and assisted by their fellow travelers in the EU. And when a few are not elected, they are rewarded for their abuses in Brussels by commissionerships or some high paying position. More credit than we deserve as our native fishing fleet are tied up in the harbour, watching out on the horizon as foreign factory ships hoover up our fish and destroy our future stocks. More credit than we deserve watching law, and law enforcement assisting the theft of our gas and oil and now our water. It is time, it is time to earn that fate and stop the native and foreign vultures picking over the bones of the last of our children's inheritance. It is time to earn that faith. Our freedom fighters gave up their lives for fu so future generations could enjoy equal distribution of our natural resources and wealth as early citizens. There's always a bustler. More credit than we deserve. The sacrifices made a hundred years ago paid with the lives and blood spilling battle for citizenship a hundred years later to be rendered mere guarantors for their speculative losses and our children and grandchildren born into subjective debt. It is time we follow the example of our freedom fighters 
They faced down their adversaries of their day and made history for tomorrow. Today, it is our time, and the Moore Street battle site represents the rebirth of a nation. It is time to save it from the vultures and develop it as a fitting tribute to those who had faith in us and make it a historical example for future generations. In conclusion, remember, men in suits are more deadly foe than suits of armor. Thank you. Shameful appeal is now going to be heard December 2017. That's a long way off and it gives us plenty of time from amongst other things for this government to go and for us to secure the future of Moore Street.